All right, and now I'm gonna show you how you would go about adding some dust to some live action footage if you wanted to kind of give it a little bit more atmosphere as well. So here's just a shot of some tables from an old project and you have some really bright light shining in through these windows. And particularly here you can see there's actually some kind of volumetric beams uh, created with some, you know, haze in the room. And so say you wanted to kind of beef that up with some more kind of floating dust in the room to give it a little bit more atmosphere. So what we've started with right here is just a sh the shot with a little adjustment layer for some color correction. And I tend to like to put all of the color correction sort of on the top of everything so that as you add elements, they kind of receive some of that color correction as well. Kind of helps keep everything sort of merged in the same world. So to start out, I'm gonna click on our footage layer here, and then we're going to select track camera. And that's gonna run a camera tracking process that can take a little while, but we're just gonna wait it out and kind of see what we get. Okay, so our track is done and we have a lot of little tracking points. And what we can do is kind of select some of those and make sure that we get the correct perspective. So what I wanna do is kind of start with just this table. And as you select points, you'll see your target kind of shifting around and you just want to kind of wait until you get the perfect kind of perspective. And so as you can see, when you drag around, if you click that target and drag it around, you can kind of see what you're dealing with. And this to me looks pretty good. So now what you can do is go ahead and right click and we're gonna select create solid and camera. And so now we have a solid in the scene and I'm gonna go ahead and hit the zero key to RAM preview and make sure that the solid is stuck well to the scene. And it's not bad. It could be a little bit better, but it's not bad and it's gonna work for our purposes because there's not a whole lot of movement to the scene. So to start out, I'm gonna add some dust up here and here. So here we have all these different focal lengths. It would be a great choice for kind of a wider scene to go ahead and use a one of the 12 millimeter options. So I'm just gonna take, I'm just gonna look here, see what we got, kind of click around. Yeah, I think this one's gonna work just fine. So I'm gonna drag it into the scene and I'm gonna make it 3D. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on this solid object. I'm gonna hit the P key and I'm gonna select position. I'm gonna command C, copy that. And then I'm gonna go to the position of our new 3D layer. And I'm gonna go ahead and command V to paste that position. And so now we have this 3D object. We're gonna drop it down into our scene below our color correction layer. And I'm gonna go ahead and set that to screen. And I'm gonna scale it way, way, way down. I'm gonna drag it up into our beam of light. Kind of find a little area that looks nice. And I think that'll work for me. And so we don't want these particles to kind of like awkwardly disappear as they go outside of this bounding box. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to our rectangle tool. We're gonna to double click it. And now we've created a mask around the edges of the object. And I'm gonna double tap the M key. And now we have our mask options and I'm gonna just bring in the mask expansion a little bit, somewhere right around there. And then I'm gonna feather about the same amount on the other side. And so now we just kind of have a nice little fall off to the edge where it's not gonna you know, awkwardly disappear. And since everything is so small, I'm just gonna go ahead and command D to duplicate. And I'm just gonna drag this one over here and just so this one looks different than this one and it's not obviously the same object, I'm just gonna flip it like that. No one's gonna notice. And just kind of move it in, make sure it's kind of pointed, it's, it's well inside of this beam of light. And that should look pretty cool. And so now we have these two objects and you know, we can go ahead and probably turn off our solid layer here. And I'm gonna also add a bunch of dust over here as well. So let's just duplicate that again. I'm gonna move this over here, somewhere in that area. And this time, let's go ahead and grab a new element. So let's just find a new one. So I'm gonna select that layer. I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and drag this new one on top of it. And so that's just gonna automatically replace it. And then we can go ahead and I'm gonna duplicate that again. I'm gonna hit the P key. And then I'm gonna take the position I'm gonna drag it way, way forward in Z space, almost all the way up to the camera. Get it real nice and big. And then I'm gonna grab a different object. Let's do one of these 85 millimeter ones because now we're closer to the camera and we'll get a little bit more 
kind of a blurry bokeh kind of feel. And I'm going to just drop the opacity to that quite a bit. Let's go almost almost all the way down, somewhere around 15, 17%, something like that. You want this one to be pretty subtle. So, and I'm actually going to go to Effect. We're going to go to Blur and Sharpen. And I'm going to select a camera lens blur. Let's turn the blur radius there to somewhere around 22%. And what that's going to do, it's going to kind of create almost the effect of bokeh. So we kind of have these like floating bokehs in the scene real close up to the camera. And they're actually all going to be kind of accurate in 3D space. And so here we go. Here's what we ended up with. We have some nice, real subtle and realistic looking dust up in these areas. And, you know, some nice little kind of out of focus points of light sort of swirling around. And I feel like if you saw this in an edit, you wouldn't notice it at all. You would just be like, "Ooh, that's a cool shot. Look at all, you know, the, look at all the nice light in this room." And so it it's just kind of a nice way to add some subtle atmosphere to your scenes. So, I hope you enjoy these elements. Have fun, kind of poke around, play around, experiment, uh play with, you know, different amounts and the different focal lengths and, you know, just try to find some looks that you like, and I hope you guys enjoy these elements. Hey everybody, how's it going? Thank you for checking out Dust Elements. If you haven't downloaded them yet, I highly recommend giving them a try. We have a bunch of different types of Dust Elements, a bunch of varied looks, and a lot of things that you can do with them in your motion graphics and compositing. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at how you can use the 2D Dust Elements in After Effects. So these are all real in-studio shot dust elements and they were shot at various focal lengths, some of them in full speed, some of them in slow motion. So obviously there are going to be a lot of options for you. So first we're gonna take a look at how you would use some of these dust elements in a motion graphics type scenario. So the other day I saw a trailer for a movie that came out recently and it happened to have some dust floating around in it. And I thought, hey, it would be cool to go ahead and try and recreate that motion graphic. And so this is the type of look that we're gonna be trying to create. Now, one of the best things about these dust elements is you can choose to make them as subtle or as intense as you want. So when you look at them, you see some of these are really intense looking dust elements. And then we also have some really subtle ones, things that, you know, if you just wanna add a little bit of texture, a little bit of volumetric kind of light, you're going to have an option that will get you what you want. And so here we go, we've got some text and we're gonna create kind of a whimsical sort of fantasy style slate with it. So this text just says dust, you can make it say whatever you want it. And I'm gonna give it a little bit of an arch. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna grab the pin tool and with our dust layer selected, I'm just gonna click somewhere to the left of the text here and I'm gonna hold down the shift key. I'm gonna click again, release the shift key so that we can get our Bezier curve here. And I'm gonna to try to make a perfect, just little hump right there inside of the text, just something like that. And then now I'm gonna go into our text here. We're gonna drop down this little arrow and we're gonna drop down the little text arrow here. We're gonna to go to path options. And for path, we're gonna select the mask that we just made and boom. Now we've got just a little bit of a bump and I'm actually gonna kind of fine tune that a little bit more. So you can still kind of fine tune things. You could go. You can go real crazy with it if you want. You could bend it down. So now I'm gonna make this text into a 3D object. And now we have a really quick and easy way to do that. I'm gonna to go to Composition, Composition Settings, and then we're gonna to go to the 3D Renderer tab, and we're gonna change that to good old Cinema 4D. We're gonna hit OK. And so nothing's happened yet, but we can now drop down our little arrow here to go to the layer options. And now if we switch this layer to 3D, we get this little geometry options tab. I'm gonna drop that down and now we have the option to add some extrusion. So I'm gonna add a little bit of extrusion and as you can see, that just doesn't look that great yet, but uh, bear with me, we're working on it. So now we're gonna go ahead and right click and I'm gonna go to new light, okay? And we're gonna make a spotlight and I don't know. Yeah, a little bit of a, you know, add a little color to it, that's fine. And so boom. So. We started with some blue text, we're adding some yellow to it. And as you can see, it's kind of creating a little bit of a turquoise color. Now I'm gonna do a little trick that I like to do with spotlights that kind of makes it a lot easier to animate them. I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna right click down here. We're gonna go to new null object. And we're gonna make that 3D and we're gonna parent our spotlight to that null object. And let's just rename that 
main spot control and we're going to select that later hit the r key and now here on rotation we're going to take the x-axis and push it downward so we're going to be lighting from below so we're going to find a nice little so here we can we can swing this light around 360 space so that's just a way that i like to manipulate spotlights just seems to kind of make things a little bit easier to play around with so now I'm gonna just kind of find a spot that I like somewhere right around in there, that's fine. And I'm gonna play with these light options just a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and kind of play with the cone angle. We're gonna go ahead and sort of close the light off a little bit so it has a little bit of a nice kind of, I don't know, vignette sort of feel. And we're going to feather that all the way to 100%. And let's just go ahead and turn up the intensity ever so slightly, somewhere right around in there. We do want a good bit of light. And so now I'm gonna take that whole thing that we just made with the spotlight and the null control and I'm gonna duplicate it. And so now we've got a second spotlight. And this time I'm gonna take our second spotlight and we're going to parent that to a, the duplicate of the null. So now we have two lights that we can manipulate in that way. And we're gonna make this a really strong, punchy kind of backlight. And let's go ahead and make the backlight a different color. Let's go ahead and let it be blue just to get a little bit of color contrast going. And now we're gonna go back to our 3D text element. I'm gonna go back to the geometry options and we're going to add a bevel. So here we have these bevel style options. I'm gonna start with angular and I'm gonna change the be bevel depth a little bit. Depth, that's a hard word to say for me for some reason. And so now you can really see that backlight that we couldn't really see before. And now let's go ahead and just add a little bit of a subtle sort of animation to our text. So our anchor points down here at the bottom, let's just do kind of a cool sort of lean into the scene sort of thing. So here we're kind of in shadow, that looks kind of cool. So I'm gonna start that there, we're gonna hit the stopwatch. And uh, again, right there, we're messing with the X axis of rotation. And we're gonna head, let's say, somewhere around one and a half seconds, something like that. And I'm gonna just go ahead and change that to where it's more pointed towards the front. And that's all I'm gonna do in here for the moment. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add all of our other stuff in a different comp because the Cinema 4D render engine kind of doesn't play well with uh, transfer modes and stuff like that. So you kind of need to do it in a separate comp. So we're gonna take our 3D text composition right here and we're just gonna drop it into a new comp. And to start, I'm gonna go ahead and make this 3D text element 3D. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a new camera. So we're gonna go to Layer, new camera, and 50 millimeters is gonna be just fine. And then we're gonna to go to layer, new null object. And we're gonna make that null object 3D. We're gonna parent our camera to that null object. And now we have our little camera rig. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a slow push to this graphic. So we're gonna hit the P key for position on the null object. We're gonna start the stopwatch and we're gonna to move towards the end and just push the camera towards that text. Now I'm gonna take a new solid and we're gonna make it kind of a real dark blue color, something like that, a little bit lighter, something like that. And we're going to put that towards the bottom here and I'm gonna take our pen tool, we're gonna to go up here or you could hit the G key and I'm gonna make kind of a, just a little bit of a shape, something like this. And so obviously that looks weird. We're gonna go ahead and select that, hit the F key and we're gonna feather that out quite a bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and make another one. I'm just gonna duplicate the one we have already made. I'm gonna hit the M key. I'm gonna delete the mask that we have. And I'm gonna put a really, really small one kind of up here. Same sort of deal. We're gonna make it kind of a weird shape and just feather it out. And another thing that I wanna do is add a little bit of texture to the background itself. So I'm gonna select both of our solids and we're gonna change the blending mode to add and then I'm gonna make another new solid and we'll just make this one, it, the color doesn't really matter. And we're gonna drag that to the bottom and we're going to go to effect, noise and grain, fractal noise. We're gonna to go to transform, uncheck uniform scaling and we'll scale up the height quite a bit something like that. I just kind of want to add something that just gives a little bit of subtle texture to this light. And we're going to go ahead and just turn that down to something like, let's say 3%, something like that. And I'm going to go ahead and throw a mask on it. We're going to mask it just right in this area. I just kind of want it to look like there's like a little bit of maybe 
kind of fog in the air or something like that. And we're going to, obviously we're going to feather that out quite a bit. So we're up to, you know, feather it to somewhere around 537%. And we can also go ahead and make that 3D. And now we're going to go ahead and hold down on the alt key, click the stopwatch for evolution. And we're going to type time. We're going to hit asterisk and let's do something like 40. What that's going to do is it's going to have that kind of animating and changing over time. And now that all that's out of the way, let's start throwing some dust in. One thing about these dust elements is you can actually just throw it into your comp and it's pretty easy to change the amount of dust in the scene. And so here we go, you know, if you just dragged it in, it's 4K, so we need to scale it down a little bit because I'm working in 1080 right now. So we've got some really nice natural looking small kind of dust, but it almost looks like snow right now. So what I would suggest is we're gonna go ahead and set that to add. And I'm gonna drag that kind of right above our little light source here. And we're gonna go ahead and set that to 3D. And it just disappeared behind our other 3D stuff. So we're gonna hit the P key and we're gonna bring that up a little bit so that now it's in the scene. Oh, I just realized one thing. We need to actually, for this composition, we need to go back to composition settings, go back to the 3D renderer tab and change it back to classic 3D because the Cinema 4D renderer in After Effects does not play well with blending modes. So now we have the 12 millimeter slow-mo 12 dust element in here. I'm gonna go ahead and just make a little mask kind of in the shape of the light that's in the scene. And we're gonna close that off and I'm going to feather that out quite a bit so that there is a nice and natural fall off. And so there you go. You've got a really sensible, you know, not too much dust, not too little dust. But if you wanted to, you could actually kind of customize the amount that the dust is visible by adding a curves adjustment. So I'm gonna to go to effect, color correction, curves. And if you want to get rid of some of this dust, you just crush down the blacks a little bit. Those little dust particles will start to disappear and you could actually make the ones that are there a little bit brighter by bringing up the highlights. And so you can kind of toy with the amount of dust that's visible. You don't want to push it too far because then you'll start getting these weird black dots. And then from there, I would just do a little bit of color correction, add a little bit of glow. So we're going to do a curves adjustment, add in some contrast, kind of like this. And let's just go ahead and add in some glow and just make it really, really expand it out something like that and we're going to turn up the glow threshold so it's a little bit more subtle and we're going to go ahead and make sure that that's underneath our curves adjustment let's go ahead and name everything so we're organized and so here's what we ended up with so obviously this is kind of more of a i guess a subtle dust approach there is quite a bit floating around but it kind of gives you the right idea basically we're using the light to motivate the location of the dust and you know it just gives it a little bit of a whimsical kind of fantasy type feel now, if you wanted to, though, you could go crazy with it. You could, you know, throw in the intense dust. You could push it really far into the background, make it 3D, push it really far into the background, like so, you know, set it to add mode and, you know, do some masking again, feather it out, do all that sort of stuff and have, you know, as much crazy dust going on as you want. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the 4K Dust product training. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Premiere Pro, and we're going to add some dust to this record scene right here. Let's hop in. All right, so I just have this quick shot right here of just a record playing. It's, uh, it's a fine shot, nice close-up shot. I just want to add a little bit of ambience to it. So I'm going to hop into probably, let's do the 35 millimeter dust. I've already imported all of this into Premiere. Uh, if you need to learn how to do that, you can just hit uh, Control i to import, and then just navigate to your footage folder. Uh, I've got all mine here, so I went ahead and imported them by focal length. So with this shot, I want something probably really subtle and probably a 35. So let's go ahead and hop to a 35 millimeter. Um, this is probably going to be too much. We can scrub through these real quick. That's a little much. How about this one? That's actually perfect. So let's go ahead and bring in this 35 millimeter subtle dust. I'm just gonna grab this little video clip here and bring it on top. You wanna stack it on a layer above your footage and you'll notice that it looks just like dust right now. And that's because two things. One, we're gonna have to add a blend mode and two, we're also gonna wanna scale this down. So this footage is 1080 and the dust clip is 4K. So if I hop into my effects controls, let's just bring this down to say 60. 
Uh, maybe even more. Or a little too much. Let's just do 50. There we go. And so now you can see more of the dust elements kind of floating up in this area right here. And let's go ahead and bump this up just so you guys can maybe see a little bit better. And let's go into the blend mode here. And you're going to want to switch. Make sure you have the dust selected, by the way. Have the dust selected, head into the blend mode, and turn this down into screen. So now you're going to see like the dust elements just floating on top of your footage. Now it looks a little odd because they're so powerfully white. So what we can do is head over to the opacity. Let's drop this down to say like 30%. There you go. Now it's nice and subtle. You can barely even tell it's playing. But the thing is, it's the dust is floating up, and I don't think it would work well given that the record is spinning around. So what I think I'm going to do is go ahead and rotate this. So if I go into my effects right here and rotate, just drop this to say negative 90. And then I've rotated it. There we go. I've rotated sideways. So now you can kind of see it like floating along. Let's bump this up just so you guys can see it real quick. Now you can see it floating along the side of this record. All right, let's undo that. And another thing that we can do is actually, here's a quick, quick trick for you. I'm going to duplicate this. So I'm going to hold down Alt on my keyboard, click on the dust, and bring it up. That's going to add a second layer of dust. And what I can do is easily offset this and scale it to make it look even more full. So I'm just going to trim this down and scoot it over so it's not the exact same clip. And here's, I'm going to show you what we're doing. So let's bump this back up to 100 real quick, just so you can see. So the first trick is I'm going to actually scale this top layer up. So let's bring this back up to 100%. And now you can see that the dust is getting bigger and it's closer to frame. But what we could do is hop into our effects controls and we want to add a Gaussian blur. So if we head into blur, let's bring this onto our top dust layer. And what we're going to do is bring this blurriness up quite a bit. And you can kind of see that might be a little too much. Bring it back down just a little bit. About there's looking pretty good. And you can kind of see now that we have both the little floaty dust in the background and some nice big dust closer to camera. I might even blur it even a little bit more uh, somewhere around, let's say, 85. And now we're going to drop that opacity back down. So let's just kill those from earlier and drop this whole clip to like 25. And now you can barely see the dust, but as you play through and you scrub through, you're going to have a nice clean look. And since it's the same clip, they're all moving at the same speed and it looks nice together. And that's it. That's how you use dust in Premiere Pro.